Welcome to my video guide. Today I will be outlining my exam guide and checklist for John Monash Science School. This will only be a one part series since I didn't make it past the interview, but I do know a few people who have so feel free to check their guides out in the description below. One quick side note, even though I didn't make it past the interview or get into John Monash, I do have experience with the exams and have helped other students to successfully get into the school. I'll break this video into three parts. Number one, applicant chances. Number two, the exam guide and checklist. And number three, past experience and tutoring. Applicant chances. There are roughly 700 to 900 students who sit the year 10 exam and roughly 300 students who sit the year 11 exam. However, the school only accepts 200 students in year 10 and roughly 20 students in year 11. The application process for year 9 to 10 and 10 to 11 follow a similar process, having the exam first and then shortlisting the applicants for an interview. The examinations for JMSS contain three multiple choice tests, mathematics, numerical reasoning, and science reasoning. It is also followed up by two writing pieces, which is a science interest and communication, then a scientific analysis and report. The three non-writing exams are all multiple choice and are to be completed within 30 minutes. I've created a mini checklist containing or outlining all the basic questions that could possibly be on the exam, so feel free to check them out in the description below. They'll also appear on screen around here. The checklist for John Monash Science School. Mathematics is a test that measures year level appropriate mathematical knowledge meaning that you'll get questions in your year level and a couple from the year above. Any of these topics listed can be tested so make sure to learn as much as you can. So there are around 16 mathematics topics that could be covered. The first 14 I think are more prevalent to uh, those applying from year 9 to 10 and the last two they kind of pop up but I think I've only seen maybe one question in the year 10 to 11 exams. So let's just begin with those. So there's number one financial mathematics which means it might cover simple interest, compound interest, depreciation. Then we have algebra as number two so factorizing, expanding, simplifying. Then thirds and indices which is number three and covers index laws, rationalizing denominators, negative fractional powers. Number four, simultaneous equations and inequations, so substitution, elimination, number lines. And number five, linear relationships, gradient formula, distance, midpoint. Uh, number six, nonlinear relationships, so quadratics, truncus, hyperbolas, exponential circles, or ovals. Although, I don't know if they'll cover truncus, hyperbolas, exponential circles, and ovals as much. It's mainly just quadratic formulas that you'll be dealing with. So knowing how to graph them as well as find key points such as intercepts would be important. Then we have rates and proportion, which deals with their Direct proportion, indirect proportion, conversion from percentage to ratio and just unit conversion between like kilometers, meters, trigonometry which deals with Pythagoras and unit circle. Although I'd say they'll just mainly focus on basic Pythag because I don't think you can do many of the other questions in less than 30 seconds. Also know your exact values for trig. Then we have mensuration which deals with all the 2D and 3D volume and area equations. There's only one to two questions on this exam but it's still matters a lot. Then we have geometry, so dealing with angles in all types of shapes from triangles, uh, quadrilaterals, dealing with it in parallel lines and perpendicular lines, then statistics, so dealing with interquartile range, knowing what median, mode, average, mean, probability, so dealing with Venn diagrams, dice, tree diagrams, conditional probability, and cards are popular questions. Then we have polynomials. They might not ask to like solve a polynomial, but they might ask for what is the graph showing? Or what is the equation of this graph? Uh, I guess knowing a bit of remainder theorem and factor theorem, but I wouldn't go too in depth in polynomials. Then we have kinematics, which is also another popular question which deals with like the time at which two objects might meet or basic questions around like speed equals distance over time and just a couple basic physics. And that's pretty much it for the year 9 to 10 portion of mathematics. Then we have like two other parts which they might ask. So that deals with functions and logarithms and circle geometry. So for functions and log, just know how to deal with base 10 and for circle geo, just know the nine theorems. And that pretty much concludes mathematics. Numerical reasoning. To sum it up, it is pretty much an IQ test around numbers. A lot of patterns are involved as well as understanding shapes and turning like paragraphs into formulas and mathematical methods of calculation. So I've kind of broken this up into like seven key question types that they'll ask. And yeah, let's just go over them now. So we have number one, number patterns. So around 
there are around four to five different ways to ask this question on life and it's all about understanding sequences and series you could do a year 11 chapter that i recommended but it isn't really that helpful like you're better off just practicing actual questions from the various tutors and number two we have like word problems around not the number of objects so this is normally provided in a paragraph and will ask you to choose the best option and then we also deal with a lot of financial questions in this exam so interest depreciation and tax number four is time questions so the problem might include uh, finding the new time that something occurs we have visual problems so we'll be given you'll be given a graph table shape then we have maths basic maths knowledge so knowing primes factors and quick math sir and then we also have coded number problems which isn't that relevant in the victorian exams or may maybe not the victorian exams the edu test exams which is what jmss will have so but i have found a lot of these questions to be on the nsw exams and i think the scholarship exams under acer but yeah they just include like whatever's presented here and you just have to understand that curve science reasoning it is the last multiple choice exam which for the most part is about interpreting information presented it is good to know a couple of the basics from the core fields of science they probably will ask a couple of basic questions. The exam checklist just outlines potential topics that could be covered so be sure to check out a couple of those. So we have number one which is biology. Make sure you know a bit about cells, organelles, photosynthesis, ecosystems, a bit about the nervous system and how the body works. And number two we have chemistry so dealing with first 20 elements, periodic table groups, organic molecules, valence electrons and reactions between elements. You might be asked to find precipitation. Number three we have physics so dealing with laws of motion, speed equals distance over time, heat, weight, pulleys, gears, and circuits, I'd say is the most important is experimental data interpretation. So that means like knowing the different variables such as the independent, the control, and the dependent, and also knowing like how precise and accurate things are. And then one extra topic that I found to be on the exam was geology and mainly dealing with rock or like sedimentary metamorphic. Now we have the two writing assessments for the exam. So this includes science analysis and reporting and science interest and communication. So SAR, a science practical report is provided and certain questions need to be answered. Normally it is a basic report and will rely more on your ability to interpret information rather than your science knowledge. This part of the exam is usually answered with an essay. I do not recall the exact topic for when I did it back in 2016 and if I remember correctly applying from year 10 to 11 you only have to deal with science analysis and reporting like there's only one of them one of writing tasks for year 10 to 11. Next we have science interest and communication so a page of information is provided sometimes even a paragraph and questions are also given. The examinee might choose to respond in either a science report or an informative essay it really depends on what the topic is. Some example questions include to design an experiment around X, write a letter to scientific peers around the findings of blah blah blah, then how would you deal with the issue X? And yeah, those are just a couple like starters for how they would give those topics. Thinking back, the topic back in 2016 was around how to stop coral reef from being damaged by chlorine. They provided a whole bunch of statistics, images, and a page of information so it was up to you as to like how you would deal with it a uh, quick sponsorship all the questions provided throughout this video are all available on my john monash science school practice exam which i've made and gotten edited by like another student who also attends selective so feel free to purchase the practice test pdfs from the site on screen past experience i did the john monash science school exam back in 2016 for year 10 and in 2017 for year 11. i got one superior in science interest and communication although i no longer have the email with my results i received an interview for your 10 entrance and messed up the interview by rocking up unprepared as for the resources that i used to study the ones in the image here are the ones i used in the past some of which have been added to my own tutoring curriculum i definitely recommend picking up a year 9 to 10 textbook to improve your mathematics as for science reasoning i recommend going over year 7 to 10 science textbook in my case i went over the pearson ones i also recommend buying like excel textbooks uh, for mathematics and numerical reasoning mainly because they are catered towards the new south wales selective schools which for the most part have a lot more difficult questions than the big one before i continue i want to say that you don't need to go to a tutoring program if you want to get into a selective school all the information you need is provided in like everyone's guides and even this checklist i do know a couple of friends who 
did get in without like they just worked their butt off or applied from a high school. It's really a matter of a bit of luck and how badly you want it. Tutoring. When applying for JMSS, I set the Jack JMSS program for year 10 and had a one on one maths tutor when applying for year 11. If I was to recommend the tutoring program from the ones I attended, I wouldn't recommend any. Instead, I would recommend my own if you're looking for a program catered towards your own learning. My program is one that I've worked on for over the past year and have pilot tested on a small number of students. Currently it has a 100% success rate for the science elective schools with one student attending JMSS and the other attending EBIS. If you would like to learn more about tutoring, feel free to message me through any of my social medias. This concludes my video on my JMSS exam guide slash checklist for the upcoming exam. I hope that this provides a lot of value and good luck with your upcoming exam. Thank you for watching and see ya!